everyone. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. You're here with Rick and Eric. Good morning, Eric. How are you, my friend? I'm great. It's uh, The snow is melting. It's been raining here for two days, so all our snow is disappearing. Really? Yeah, we're kind of having a uh, big cold front push through down here and uh, kind of spinning up a nor'easter, they say. Going to roll up the coast and visit you uh, tomorrow or the day after. Nice. That's yeah, what I, need. I, I just wanted to give you a little early Christmas present. <laughs> So hey everyone, we have a couple of fun things to talk about. Well, we're going to talk an update on Rick's uh, camera mishap. We're going to talk about making your own Christmas cards and an upstart uh, company in the space race. Yeah. And then, uh, viewer mail from Marcus and from Tish. So stay tuned. Yeah, and from Kevin. Oh yes, Kevin too. Sorry. Well, That's Kevin's all right. like part of the crew now. He is. So. Oh, and a shout out to Left Coast Rick. Um, I think initially he thought that we were. Uh, kind of maybe hurt by his email and actually we really liked it because the people that listen to the show are a lot smarter than Rick and I <laughs> <laughs> every one of them yeah. yet another we've got uh, Tony the scientist and now we have left coast Rick who was a professor of musculotelos something wow telekinesis yeah well he's a smart guy yeah so, smart guy there you go yeah. Yeah, and uh, we, we are humbled by our uh, our uh, listeners all the time, and feel free to do it anytime you'd like. Yeah, radio at gardenfork.tv. That email address has made it so much easier for me to find the viewer mails when we have to put together the show every week. So thanks for uh, emailing to that, radio at gardenfork.tv. Okay. So camera update, sir. Yeah, camera update. Uh, the camera update. Uh, if you didn't hear the earlier shows, and shame on you for not listening... Um, I had a uh, camera snafu where I stuck a 64 gigabyte card into my Canon and went on a trip and then accidentally formatted it and wiped out everything in a very permanent and embarrassing manner. And so while I lost about 32 gigabytes worth of uh, travel photos. And so I knew better and we, I'm not going to walk, rewalk that trail. But I just thought people might be interested to know how I'm fixing it. And I'm fixing it with the uh, uh, help of our friend Kevin. We know him as Little Black Dogs, with an S, Little Black Dogs, who um, uh, works in the field and gave me a lead on a couple of really nice devices. One of them is, um, you know, Western Digital, the hard drive people, mm -hmm. are producing a, uh, a new device, and it's called My Passport Wireless. And they come in 500 gigabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte versions. The one, the 500 gigabytes, just about a hundred dollars. And it has a, a, a USB hub uh, or USB three hub, Wi-Fi hub. It's password protected. It provides streaming video and all that stuff. But it's also battery powered and has a card reader in it uh, for the SD card. And so it is a perfect device. I ordered one. It's here now. I've got it set up. Uh, it has apps that you can use on your uh, Android or iOS device or on your uh, regular computer to interact with it. Um, but it will. you can set it up on the road so that when you stick an SD card in it, it copies and does not delete all the files that are on that SD card so that you get a backup while you're on the road. And it has battery, so it will... Um, uh, you can even do this in really uh, kind of godforsaken places. This has been a staple of the um, high-end camera business for a while. And these units, even at just the 500 gigabyte level, have been costing in the Photoshop's uh, uh, four or $500 a piece. Uh -huh. And so uh, here, the uh, even the two gigabyte version uh, is costing just uh, uh, about $220 or so. Uh, so if you can get a hundred dollar one for um, uh, for uh, five hundred gigs, get one for about a hundred. Yeah, for five hundred gigabytes for travel. If this kind of thing is important to you, um, do it. And I also, uh, while I was at it, I bit the bullet and upgraded to some really expensive uh, sixteen gigabyte cards that are super fast. That's the reason I was using that one big card because I bought a big super fast card that writes video to the uh, uh, to the card very quickly so that the video wouldn't um, kind of stammer or stutter a little right. bit sometimes and uh, that's the reason I had it in the camera and I bought uh, seven 
16 gigabyte cards. And uh, from here on out, from, uh, blah, 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 blah. from here on out, I promise uh, one card per day, and I'm going to start being religious because uh, that was a painful lesson. So if I've got this right, it's like a portable hard drive with a little slot for your camera card, and it copies the contents of the camera card over to the hard drive. Exactly. And it's like automatic, so you just like you know you could at the end of the day pop this in, go to dinner, and it's done. You know. Right. And uh, if you have a uh, wireless, uh, you know, they make the little wireless uh, what Wi-Fi cards. Right. Uh, you can actually connect your Wi-Fi card to this wirelessly and uh, do it that way. And it has USB, so you can connect it to your computer if you want to get, you know, when you want to suck those out of your uh, little hard drive and put them on your main computer to sort and, and work with. Excellent. So it, it's it's just a, it's a great all-around uh, little device. So far, it's working flawlessly for me. Uh, I actually set it up as a node on my uh, uh, wireless net uh, network here at the house. Uh, so I can access it from my uh, laptop. So I can access it from my uh, uh, iOS, my iPad, my iPhones. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, just shoot videos. You can shoot videos, uh, uh, pictures, anything you want up there. Uh, it's, it's just a hard drive. You can store stuff up on it. But it's cool. fast enough that uh, it, it's working beautifully. Yay. Yay. My, uh, my father-in-law does a lot of traveling now, and he was carrying around quite a bulky backup system for his cards. And so I'm going to tell him about this. Okay. Excellent. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's the holiday season, so this might be a great time to, uh, you know, a little something to think about. If you have a photographer or a videographer in your life, um, a, a pretty reasonably priced uh, uh, doodad for them. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, um, iTunes now allows HTML links in the show notes. So if you're listening to us on your um, Apple device and, you know, the Garden Fork Radio logo is kind of big and square while this episode is playing, if you tap on the center of the uh, image, the logo, the show notes will come up and there are clickable links there now. Okay. Um, so we will link to this device uh, through um, Amazon and b and Photo because we're affiliates of both of those. So if you would consider using those links for some of your shopping, uh, we get a little finder's fee from them and it helps pay the server bill, which has kind of gone up lately. <laughs> oh, has it? <laughs> well, you've been publishing a lot of videos. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, you kind of publish or perish in this world. So you have to keep cranking stuff out. And yeah. uh, I've uh, also started to uh, do a second email during the week, bringing up uh, past shows and posts that people haven't, maybe haven't seen or forgot about. So, yeah, I'm, I like the uh, replacing the, uh, the on off switch or the power switch on your power tools. Yeah, that's one I did a while ago, and actually right. one of my uh, power tools died the other day, and I have to t I'll test it to see if it's the switch, but a lot of times when your power tools die, you, you can fix them. Yeah, they're, they're pretty straightforward, and you know, and a lot of people invest an enormous amount of money in them, and uh, you know, if it just goes out because of a switch, uh, that's something that's uh, well worth fixing. My, I have a skill, uh, skill hammer drill. It's a low end, you know, consumer level hammer drill, but I've made a lot of money with this thing. <laughs> um, you know, doing handyman work, like hanging TVs on people's walls in New York City because they don't, you know, they're plaster walls or their or their concrete walls or brick walls, and but it um, doesn't work anymore. And I'm pretty sure it's the brushes on the commutator of the of the um, electric motor because it, it used to kind of, it started to spark a little bit and go rank, rank, and then it just died. So I'm trying to find uh, some generic replacement brushes because on the skill site, um, they don't have those parts. They have some other parts. So yeah. stay tuned for that. And you know, and there's kind of two ways to think about it. Um, I have a friend that's in the, uh, be removal business mayor had to cough and um this is you know the people that come to your house and when they're inside a wall or they're you know generally inside a wall they come and cut out the wall and, and mm -hmm. get the bees out of your house and that is you know and they use skill saws a lot uh, the are the um, reciprocating saws a lot and it's just hard not to let the honey and and all that run down into the saw and he is a big fan of going down into the um, 
the, the big discount places and buying the very cheapest saw he can possibly find uh, because he just it just ruins him so quickly. I actually bought a reciprocating saw from Hybrid Freight Tools the other day for $20. Mm-hmm. Um, they were having their, they have a, a parking lot sale or a tent sale or something. And I just, I need to go get another electrical fish tape because I got it stuck in the wall. And it's like 20 bucks for a saw. I'm like, I'll just take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because once uh, honey runs down into the motor, it's pretty much gone. It's toast. Yeah. They do, you know, at Radio Shack and some uh, good hardware stores, you can buy a spray can of electrical contact cleaner. And that does wonders when um like if you have a little palm sander a lot of times the palm sander just gets so much dust in the motor from sanding and you can blow you can blow it out with air but also this electrical contact cleaner is good because um it'll dissolve the stuff and clean the clean the commutator as well so something to think about there well i'll think about it um, i need a little can of honey be gone yeah <laughs> All right, um, I wanted to bring up something that I actually love to do, which is printing. I love printed matter on paper. And I recently met um, a fella, Patrick, who has a letterpress shop in the town in Connecticut, just right down the road from us. It's Winstead, Connecticut. And it's called Lucky Duck Press. If you uh, need some custom letterpress printing, they also have an Etsy shop. I'll link to that. Um, he gave us a tour. He's in this cool old warehouse building in the middle of town. His family's owned the building for years, and he was actually living in Brooklyn with his letterpress shop, and he moved it up to Connecticut. Can um, I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah. What is letterpress exactly? Letterpress is using movable lead type with the old, um, usually hand-powered machines, and then you would the machine inks the type, and then you drop in a card into the machine, and it and the and the inked type presses onto the piece of paper, like a, a letter. That's what it's called, letter press. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll link, I'll, maybe I can embed the video on the, sh on the site, but Etsy did a really great video of him. I love printing. I love silkscreen. Um, I love woodblock printing. I love letterpress stuff. So he's a good guy. And if you, uh, he has some really beautiful greeting cards and envelopes and things like that. Wow. Okay. But, we did last year a block printing video. Um, sometimes it's called linoleum block printing, which is really simple. And I think it's super kid friendly and you can make your own greeting cards and people love it. And it's very inexpensive. You can go to your art supply or hobby store and they're going to have a, a small section, but of linoleum blocks, little cutters to carve out the blocks and some ink and I just, uh, I really like that kind of thing. So I, yeah, re I remember seeing your uh, video. You did that with somebody else. Um, I'm blanking on her name and she's super nice. Yeah, so, she was so sweet. Um, she's the guru of it in Brooklyn. Um, so if you're, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, doing some cards and thinking all oh, the ones in the store aren't really great, um, consider this. So did I send you one last year, Rick? Uh, no, no, you didn't. Okay, well, I'll, I'll print the same ones and send them this year. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have the same mistake on it? Yeah, yeah. I okay. still have I still have the block to print them. So. Okay. So just something to think about. Um, and I'd like to hear from you guys if you do any uh, printing or art of any kind. Uh, radio at GardenFork.tv there. So. Terrific. Do you want to talk about now we've gone from analog printing we can go to the into space uh, let me get this article up uh, we were have been discussing this eric and i have a back channel we keep running almost continuously and um we send these messages back and forth and uh, secret in coded ours, messages we send secret coded messages <laughs> um in ars technica which is a uh, uh, a neat website yeah, and it's very, uh, very science oriented and and uh, and technical oriented. Uh, there is the uh, an article about the uh, Firefly space systems, and they're actually working on getting uh, uh, out of Cedar Park, Texas, a DIY uh, launching uh, system launching system uh, to get microsats micro satellites up into orbit. Uh, and they've got, uh, they're trying all these new things. Uh, some of it was just beyond me. But, uh, you know, they're going to start using carbon fiber rockets. Because they're lighter are, than metal rockets. Right. And, and they, you know, contain. And they're going to start using a single fuel um, 
Uh, Methane based, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can I kind read the a... Can I read the quote? Please do. Methane fuel plugged auto genius genuously pressurized aero spike engine. Okay. And, <laughs> and I'd be glad to explain that. No, Left Coast Rick is going to explain that to us. Oh, it's, 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 it's in the uh, it's in the article. <laughs> it, I just I it, just I just loved it because it's it's guys like like us people like us. Sorry, um, and I actually really like what Elon Musk is Elon Musk is doing with SpaceX. Um, right. But this is just kind of like it's almost it's like a maker it's like a maker who has decided to go aim for low Earth orbit. And his quote is: "Once you're in low Earth orbit." You're halfway to everywhere, because the hard the hardest part of space travel, from what I understand, is getting off the Earth. Right. And once you're in Earth orbit, you can slingshot to all sorts of places. And you know, and it's not like these guys don't have a lot of engineering and and, and space background. A lot of them come from uh, NASA. Or a lot SpaceX, of them are, yeah. Yeah, or retreads from NASA that have retired out or, or whatever and wanted to really get involved in trying a new approach to it. And then a lot of them have uh, come from SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk uh, operation, uh, and wanted to try a new approach. Uh, I was fascinated by, and you never think about how the pressures change inside the rocket uh, while you're trying to um, uh, supply the uh, the fuel to the exhaust where the burners are and how you have to manage that and that uh, we've been doing it um, in a traditional way and they're going to try a whole that's what the uh, the autogenesis part of this is and uh, so it was uh, it's just a fascinating read and this is uh, maker to the nth yeah good for them i mean you know true uh uh full disclosure um fireflies uh Mr. Markuzik is his name. Uh, he has a PhD in mechanical and aerospace engineering. So, but you know, I, if a little work, you and I could have that too. So. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's just it's it's wonderful. Uh, you know, this is the way you know things normally work and ought to work. Um, you know, governments come together. They they do the heavy initial lifting of of getting it worked out how to do it. And we're beginning to see private companies now, um, SpaceX and now Firefly Space Systems. And, and more will be coming along that uh, take over as, um, as you know, the low Earth orbits and getting stuff up there. And so, yeah, that's kind of the way things always work. I love it. Also, um, we watched the uh, Orion uh, launch the other day on the NASA website. And they've oh, got, yeah. they had cameras everywhere. They had cameras on the um, rocket and all around the launch pad. And... You know, it's not edited together super well on the NASA site, but it's just kind of phenomenal to watch the thing from several different viewpoints. You know, like there's one that's kind of low and it's just outside the launch pad and just how the fire kind of like fills up the um, the whole uh, view of the camera, you know, and the camera doesn't melt either, interestingly. <laughs> <enough>. <laughs> so there yeah. you go. Just a, kind of a neat thing there. Uh, we yeah, video up. has gotten so cheap video cameras, uh, and particularly uh, little ones like the GoPros. Yeah, that um, they've revolutionized uh, uh, any number of active things. I know MythBusters uses them all the time, and uh, they set them out near their explosions, near their fires, and whatnot. And uh, about half the time, probably the uh, uh, the camera just gets destroyed. But if they can rescue the chip out of it, uh, they've got their footage, and uh, it's a lot less expensive than uh, building a shield and, and plexiglass enclosure and all that stuff for a uh, yeah. high-end video camera. Just almost almost uh, disposable. In a way, yeah. Would you like to read some viewer mail? Uh, sure. You we got, uh, I did a series... Actually, we didn't even really talk about it yet, but I did uh, three videos about uh, cast iron and how to clean it, how to repair really badly damaged cast iron the best way to season cast iron um we talked about polymerization and uh marcus sent us an email he says hi eric um i'm a cast iron fan myself one of the tricks i like from removing old seasoning is to put the piece of cast iron in a self-cleaning oven on clean cycle for a few hours it makes a bunch of smoke but the iron comes out just like it left the foundry totally true um yeah. It does smoke up your house, but if you have one of those overhead uh, fan hood things, 
Mm -hmm. um, that can take a lot of the smoke out of your house. Um, as much as we like cast iron, we're nowhere near the league of a guy named Jeff Rogers, who's got an amazing cast iron collection. I don't think he podcasts, but he has a heck of a YouTube channel, and we will link to the channel. It's called Culinary Fanatic um, on YouTube. And one of these days, if you circle back to Cast Iron, he might be a good guest. So we're going to, uh, yeah, we always talk about it. So I will reach out to him and see. Uh, so then Marcus goes on, the podcasts I follow in the food beverage vein are Basic Brewing Radio, a homebrew show done by Jane Spencer, and My Life as a Foodie by Phil um, Nygash. I'm Looks not quite good. sure how to say that. Yeah. Uh, Phil's been on hiatus for a while, but he says he has some projects in the work. Cool. Thanks very much for the podcast and YouTube work you do. It does a lot to cheer up my commute. So that's from oh, Marcus. That's wonderful. Yay. Yay. Ah. And then we have uh, another one about um, yogurt and baking here. I'm going to paraphrase some of this, Tish, um, and I will post your detailed process um, in, on the website as well. Yeah, this is from Tish. Yeah. Hi, Rick and Eric. I really enjoy your podcast. I work alone in a home-based bakery, and you guys keep me company. I, that's You know, we found that a lot, is that people listen to us while they're working. So, Well, you know, that's one reason I love podcasts, because you can uh, kind of set up a playlist and then work with your hands all day long, out in the garden or, in my case, out with the bees or something uh, during the spring, uh, and just kind of have something going through your mind uh, other than your own thoughts and it's 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 wonderful <laughs> yeah those thoughts <laughs> <laughs> and all and all the voices that are there yeah. we um i've been catching up on the back episodes of root simple and um i aspired the garden for could be more like the root simple podcast so <laughs> they oh. sound like they have their act together more <laughs> anyway that's not a slight against you and i rick so. oh well it can be it's all right <laughs> I'm used to it. No, I just think that um, I'd like to make it more, uh, well, like today, I actually sent you the topic list ahead of time. Yeah. And I usually just dump it on you right when we're going to do the show. <laughs> so Of course, I, I didn't find it until I sat down. So, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it works both ways. Today, I wasn't really super prepared, but oh, well, it happens. It's great to have you here, sir. Well, thank you. Anyway, um... Back from the love fest here. Uh, mm. So Tish goes on, yesterday I was decorating Christmas cookies and I listened to several podcasts in a row. So I don't know which podcast it was, but Rick mentioned wanting to try making yogurt. I make all our own yogurt uh, and it's easy. This is my method. So it's a it's a really long description here. So I'm going to go and put it on the site. But suffice to say that she uses her oven and she says that most ovens will work really well. And if you like a thicker yogurt, you can add non-fat dry milk powder to your yogurt culture and it will come out thicker. And I've done that and it works really well. Oh, okay. And it, but she also makes cheese and she says you can buy yogurt, con yogurt culture from New England cheese making. I've done that. She says I've had really good results using plain yogurt from the grocery store. Um, look for live cultures and an ingredient list that includes no more than three items, milk, live cultures, and maybe milk solids. So the yogurts that are uh, maybe not a national brand, but a, like a local farm brand might be better. Um, and I should say live cultures on there because some of the yogurts, the cultures are not live. So uh, well, I'm going to give that a try. You need about a tablespoon per quart of new milk. Um, she says, I warn, so she goes about her uh, process of, Making the yogurt, she says, I warm my milk while I fix dinner and I cool it while I eat and I leave it in a little cooler overnight. I make two quarts every 10 to 14 days. I just wanted you to know that you don't need expensive tools or yogurt specific equipment. Yogurt is a simple food. It's easy to make. So keep up the, keep up the good work from Tish. Oh, thank you, Tish. I'll give it a try and see what we can do here. And literally, if you can click, if you're listening in on the, the podcast app on your iPhone, uh, if you click on the Garden Fork icon picture while you're listening to the show, the show notes should come up and there will be a link to that post on our site. There you go. Well, another good show. Yeah, it's perfect, I think. Yeah. I wonder if we just about filled out Monica's commute. She'll let us know. We'll get a shout out from her. Yeah. And, uh. Let me see, Tony, uh, scientist Tony. We haven't heard from him in a while. I, boy, I follow him on Facebook, though, and he just goes all the time. I, I like his uh, little series that he has, uh, Things That I Think, uh -huh. or Things I Think, and uh, he comes up with some of the wildest stuff. Well, let's, we'll ask him if we could link to that. Okay, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I've been uh, playing with uh, Instagram more, and I really like it. It's uh, I'm very spontaneous and impulsive, as you all know. So it's a it's a very fun tool for that because I'm just like, oh, I'll take a picture of that and share it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and you know, you you got Instagram, you've got um, Tumblr now. Uh, you're everywhere. It's and it's it's hard to be everywhere. So I might dial back some of it to say the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Be everywhere. Oh, and make a living, you know? Yeah, and, and Pinterest. Yeah, I, you know, I got to be better at Pinterest. I'm learning more about that, so. You know, I'm, I'm looking for tools that will uh, automate. So, you know, it's like post once and uh, and distribute to all the things at, at one time. And um, I'm, I'm working on it. Hootsuite is doing a pretty good job. And then um, uh, if then the... If this, then that. Yep. I F F F I F T T T T T T T whatever, is um, is uh, is helping with some of it, so that that takes some of the pain out of it. But I, I notice every now and then, uh, my uh, little recipe in uh, if this then that um, quits, and I won't notice it for a while, and so then stuff stops being updated, and so I'm working on how to uh, to get that better. But, it, you know, there, there are a lot of tools out there that uh, help get you uh, organized. Cool. Oh, also, if you guys want to sign up for our email newsletter, uh, there'll be a link in the show here. I love this that we can actually link to things now in the podcast app. Yeah, instead of sending them to the, uh, to the site. And we, um, I just published, I posted a uh, Eric's uh, cookbook gift guide suggestions. It's in the email um and I also will post it on the site as well. But just if you're thinking about cookbooks, just some some cookbooks cookbooks that I like. If you guys have cookbooks you like, I'd like to hear about that. And I could put those out in an email as well. All right? Okay. So thank you for your time, Rick. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Appreciate that. Well, enjoy the uh, nor'easter I think we're sending you in the next day or two. Yeah, the sun is out right now, and it's and it's stopped raining, so uh, I can go out in the yard. The hoop house is doing really well, by the way, my new hoop house. So. Is it? It's standing up. Yeah, it's up. <laughs> 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 All right, we'll see you later, everyone. Okay, talk to you later, my friend. Bye. Mm, bye-bye. Garden Fork's theme music is used under license from uniquetracks.com. Uniquetracks.com.